They came from across Myanmar to try and end conflicts that have lasted a lifetime. With negotiating positions as diverse as their costumes, just getting the country's main ethnic armed groups in the same room as the Burmese army has been a Herculean task. Having achieved it, Myanmar's de facto leader opened proceedings and hailed what she called a unique opportunity. All the people across our country are watching with great anticipation. Ethnic people in the parts of our country where there is not yet peace are waiting for the outcome of this conference. Many have had to flee their homes to avoid conflict. They hardly dare to hope any longer. We must not forget their plight. But Myanmar's army is not under Ms. Suu Kyi's control, so it was significant that the commander-in-chief also stood up to pledge his commitment to peace. With the Burmese army still targeting rebels in several states, those words rang hollow for some. We are here to talk about peace, but back in my place, they're still fighting. People are still running and crying. But for now, the armed groups seem willing to give peace talks a chance, hoping that vague promises about a federal union will mean power being devolved to minority areas. We would like to end this conflict with dignity for both sides and then start our new life in this whole country for the benefit of our grand people and all the people in this country. That is why we believe that this conflict is the beginning of the end. You managed to get almost everybody here in the same room. What happens next? Yeah, what happens next is going to be harder than what we did before, because uh, especially right now, uh, next, next six months, we're going to have another conference. But before the next conference, we have to do some negotiations on the critical issues. Some predict the negotiations could take five years to complete. The scale and complexity of these talks are daunting, but there's little doubt that this process represents the best chance for a nationwide Burmese peace since independence almost 70 years ago. Jonah Fisher, BBC News in Naypyidaw.